I went right back on a 3,000 milligram a day um, routine, and I was taking um, several shots a day plus uh, about three bottles of orals. Now, um, six weeks before the competition, um, I got my body fat pretty low, you know, down to about um, only a couple percent. Yeah. And that when I jacked the dosage way up to 10,000 milligrams a day, taking nine shots a day and five bottles of orals. What's up, guys? Derek, moreplacemoredates.com. Today, we're going to be talking about Pete Grimkowski's steroid cycle from the golden era. So, he did an interview whereby he kind of delved into it. So, that's I'm basically just going to react to it and kind of state my thoughts on it in this video. There's no secret. It was actually legal back then as well. But what do you yes. think back in those days that you took? What actually worked for you to give you the size you wanted? What actually worked? You know, I used everything. What I was doing was <laughs> um, I went right back on a 3,000 milligram a day um, routine. And I was taking um, several shots a day plus uh, about three bottles of orals. Now, um, six weeks before the competition, um, I got my body fat pretty low, you know, down to about um, only a couple percent. Yeah. And that when I jacked the dosage way up to 10,000 milligrams a day. Okay, so here, this just seems completely absurd, but the guy has the straightest look on his face possible. And obviously, I'm going to listen to this further before I give any insight. But off the bat, this is, you know, astronomical dosages, multiple fold higher than even the most abusive of bodybuilders in modern day like bottles of orals 10,000 milligrams a fucking day not a week like a week is already like absurd this guy's saying a day taking nine shots a day and five bottles of orals Jeez. um one meal a day but uh, five protein drinks a day so my uh, protein was relative to the anabolic activity boy you and i can't yeah pretty cut yeah you took a lot I, I took too, probably way too much more than I needed to take. You know, I probably could achieve the similar results. But, you know, I only was had four months to put on all that weight again from 192 back up to 247, I believe. I came in 252, I came in at. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I just uh, felt maybe this was the way to go. But uh, I was training under hypnosis doing uh, seven hours a day, uh, seven hours. And uh, I was training daytime in California, but then for the world contest I came in even better shape uh, after I came to California um, I was getting ready for the world in September and Sprague wanted me to enter that America contest in um, um, uh, July okay so like this guy seems like a nice enough guy and maybe there just wasn't I don't see why he'd lie but again like even if you were doing like nine shots a day or what did he say fuck like i'm trying to even think like 27 cc's a day if you fully loaded the syringe like could you even get 10,000 milligrams a day we have 250 milligrams per milliliter at most for something typically and most of this stuff is pharma back then so it probably wasn't even that high to begin with it was probably much less so let's just say even give it the benefit of the doubt which was likely lower but 250 per milliliter times 27 that's only 6,750 milligrams. So this guy is claiming he basically did, he would have had to do like fucking 15 shots of three cc's a day. Like there's no way he was doing 10,000 milligrams a day. Like I think he's just re remembering incorrectly and doesn't actually know what he was doing, but I'll let him continue. And I just didn't want to get ready for the America necessarily. You know, I didn't even want to. <laughs> Some kid just like bails hard in the background randomly enter it but yeah kind of kept saying you know you're gonna represent gold's gym and enter it and uh, and uh, then after uh, I, I only placed third in that contest so um that's one day john's won yeah but you and, carried a lot of size your delts were phenomenal well then i i got ready for the world and entered the world which i won in most muscular titles and everything for that and then i stayed in mexico for a few months uh, in acapulco there where the kind of that's what actually i went to mexico city and we did a, a talk show which was all about health and fitness 
This guy actually had a great physique. If you actually go look back at his uh, pictures, his contest photos, as well as just his physique in uh, photo shoots and whatnot in the gym, training, out with friends, whatever. This guy looks sick. And honestly, for his age, he's one of the healthier looking bodybuilders from that era nowadays. Like the fact that he's still alive is impressive based on what he says he did. But on top of that, like to be honest, he looks younger than every single bodybuilder in his age class, in my opinion, that he competed against. Like this is like an Arnold era guy who's I don't know his exact age, but he definitely looks younger than every single other guy in that age group. And he still has his hair, he looks healthy, he's seen he's very well spoken. And he had a great physique. Like, anyone would be super happy with it. Fuck, I'd be happy with this physique. This guy looked amazing. And I think this guy just has no clue what he was actually using. Like, I guess you can quantify a bottle and say, I took a bottle of orals a day. I guess, like, you can't really screw up remembering if he took a bottle or not. But, I mean, damn, dude, like 10,000 milligrams with some of this stuff is dosed at, like, 50 to 100 milligrams per milliliter at most. Like, there's just no way that you could even inject that many sites and not have some sort of... I, like, I don't even know what to fucking say. I'm just going to let him keep talking. This is at the Camino Real Hotel in... So I, and that's how it all started. I remember those days well. I remember seeing you uh, not only at the gym, but on some auditions over in Hollywood. We were at some yeah, building. We were I mean, in a hallway. We were sitting and talking about the auditions. Everybody was waiting outside. We were kidding around. I don't know why that it's in my head, but I never forgot it. So Rick Drazen, I don't know why he hasn't brought up the fact that well, actually, maybe he's somewhere else in this interview, but Rick is the one who sort of brought to the surface the dosages of the golden era guys. And he always talked about how it was three Diana Ball a day and a shot of Primo a week. And everyone would sort of like reinforce this. Frank Zane would talk about it. A lot of people in the golden era would reinforce this sort of dosage protocol and this scheme of combinations of products in terms of the Primo and the D-Ball being the most kind of like go-to combination of that era. And for him to, <laughs> like obviously he's shocked at the dosages, but it, maybe he just doesn't even believe it and he's not even touching on it because he knows it's so unbelievable and there's no way that that was what he was actually using. I don't really know why he's skimming over this, but like Rick and all of his, everyone else in that circle supposedly at most used like a few hundred milligrams per week at most. And then even of the guys who speculate that the dosages were far higher, some people think it was, you know, 50 to 100 milligrams of D-ball per day with like 100 milligrams of Primo every single day. Like we're still only in like the couple gram territory. We're not talking about 10 grams per day. That's 70,000 milligrams per week. Like it's impossible. So there's another interview I wanted to go into where they delve into the dosages a bit more and there's a bit more uh, of a detailed discussion of the dosages too. Hey, give me the protocol. You were using how much a day? I was using, um, entering um, that th last three week or whatever period, sometime it'd be five week, um, mostly three week is when I jam it way up to the, but uh, I, I was go I would be approximately 3,000 milligrams a day at the time. So that's, shots, oral tablets. And don't forget, back then we didn't have the growth hormone. You know, right. this was, we were talking back in the 70s, 60s and 70s. Um, you know, I, I quit train. My last competition was 1979. And, um, you know, I just did exhibitions till 82. You know, Randy, Randy really got right on when he got, uh, made me aware of what the dates were because, you know, it just went from one thing then to the franchising, the international, then the, the clothing all over right. the world. So, 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 Peter, so, you you uh, would you would actually do three injections upon waking or during waking. the morning. Yeah, like uh, like for example, if I left the gym, even when I was doing exhibitions in in 1982, um, while I still had Gold's Gym, I mean, you know, I I, I had had Gold's Gym already. I stopped competing. But I had exhibitions to do, so I was training. I was on the same schedule, um, you know, train all night. You 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 um, get up in the morning. Um, uh, I mean, you know, I before I go to bed in the morning, I would take several shots. I would go to um, eat some pro. To, what was it? Um, I'd have my hamburgers, um, which wasn't my main meal. Right. Um, that, that you know, that was um, to feed that anabolic activity after my training oh, that was your post-workout meal so you yeah. you so at at one point 
You were but using it was, about- it was my post anabolic meal was was I, I you know I knew every time I took anabolics you got to have some kind right. of a you know be it protein be it um, uh, um, uh, some form of uh, solid food that be my meat then I'd go to sleep like a lion would right. Right. and in the afternoon before my training schedule started at night I'd always try to get a piece of fish with a salad and um, and uh, you know um, fuel and fuel the workout now Randy. This this three grams a day of combined androgen use was this was this fairly widespread uh, amongst the powerlifters and the bodybuilders back then, or was this something that Peter extracted because he was training as a powerlifter and brought it over? No, three gra- <coughs> excuse me, three grams a day is what Peter was taking leading up to the last three weeks. The last two weeks, I understand Peter went took it up to ten grams. Yeah, that's what I read. I was going to say it was ten right. grams yeah, of combined androgens week, but- a day. Before he before he got up to ten grams, he was already on to three grams. Now in powerlifting, like uh, when Peter first gave me his protocol, like I'm not an expert in this area. I I, I called Maro and I asked him, is, "Is this possible?" Okay, so clearly I'm probably misunderstanding earlier because I'm just thinking about it now. If you're having a bottle of orals per day, obviously that would contribute to the biggest chunk of the ten thousand milligrams. So I guess maybe it's possible. That he was doing however many shots plus orals equating to a to- in totality 10,000 milligrams per day, which is fucking absurd. Like the fact that this guy is walking and talking still, I guess just goes to show how resilient the human body is. That you can literally put that much shit in your mouth and stress your liver that much acutely and still not go into liver failure. And the guy still, he seems healthy right now. Like again, like he seems like probably one of the youngest looking and most vibrant guys from that era. And Marl looked at it and he said, you know, I've I've never seen this before. But he says, yeah, he goes, it it is possible. Like Marl saw like power lifters. One power lifter walked up to him right in front of him, downed an entire bottle of uh, Dianable. That's 100 tablets, right. Right. Yeah, it's 500 milligrams right that one one shot. And Marl said that power lifters were already using IV drips in the 1970s before the bodybuilders. We're, we're using it. So obviously some of the bigger guys were using a, quite, a, quite a bit. I don't know exactly how much. Peter's the only guy, I think, who came right out to say exactly, or close to what he could recall, exactly what he was taking, like five bottles of Anovar, was it three bottles of Max Oblin, and three bottles of Winstrol with those 27 cc's of uh, of oil a day. Yeah. Holy shit. Okay, so he's using nine shots of three cc's per day, which – seems absurd as fuck and then several bottles of orals like this is baffling shit yeah yeah, yeah. So, so, so so you yeah. would take what about the wasn't there another what was the one uh, there was another oral there that i didn't recognize orgabolin or something like that well that was a russian one see that one that was for cattle and what they would bulls they would give that to uh, they <laughs> Quarter and those were quartered now you know i opened a bottle and of course i got it in italy and um, I was going to England to do an exhibition, and um, I, I saw they were quartered, so I figured, well, this must be, you know, not cracked up to be what they think it is. But I, there were only 10 tablets to a bottle, and um, I took the whole bottle. But what happened, it forces grow so incredibly fast that um, and, and one quarter gets, you have to shred it in a little shredder or whatever they call it, the, over the feed and you can a bottle of that stuff should last 500 pounds of feed Uh, for all these bulls. and you were taking a whole bottle in one shot uh well i took the whole bottle in addition to the 10,000 milligrams i already took because i figured how am i going to know how much better it performs well then i collapsed in england all my muscles went into spasms and luckily i was i i lived because my heart could have gone into a spasm as well you were you were dehydrated at the time well, I was dehydrated as well, yeah. yeah. And, of course, with the, the the accentuated anabolic activity at that last minute like that, you know, it just was... Yeah, you know, it pushes yeah. your central nervous system over the edge. Randy, oh, so so sure. in summary, uh, it, it was the powerlifters led the charge. The Olympic athletes led the charge. These types of protocols leading up to a competition of, of getting up to a point of 10,000 combined androgen milligrams a day was commonplace back then, right? Um, 
I I can't say that ten thousand milligrams was common. Oh, that was just something Peter was doing. <laughs> like, well, that's why I called the chapter where no man had gone before. Right? Yeah, like, I yeah. mean, <clears throat> you know, even uh, even with uh, the power lifter in front of Amaro, he took that's only five hundred milligrams. Peter, like I mean, took several times more than that. So, I doubt there was too many people engaging. Like I said in the book. Uh, Matching the testosterone derivatives as Peter back. <laughs> yeah. I think he was leading the pack. See yeah. another thing that you have to take in consideration: that my caloric intake throughout the day wasn't as high as a lot of people's was either. But I I had achieved that to a lot of the reason I was um, taking most muscular in so many competitions was because my intercellular as well as subcutaneous fats were fairly low. Um, although I kept my fluid pretty high, so that was my form of insulation. And uh, I wanted to get in really top shape where you show all the striations throughout the chest and the delts and so forth, um, throughout the, every part of the body. It's, you know, the striations came from um, taking that last-minute fluid off, which was right. a lot easier to do than taking fat off at the last yeah, minute. Yeah, no, absolutely. But, I mean, clearly, also, the anabolic index of your body – uh, by using such high amounts of androgens would predict that even though you were not uh, taking in a lot of calories, your body was very, it was so anabolic that you were not losing muscle. The body would probably go for fat far first before it would go for muscle. Okay, so honestly, this is the first case report of a golden era bodybuilder who trained in that kind of like circle who's going out on a limb and talking about these kind of dosages. This is like the original Boston Lloyd or the original Rich Biana, I guess. And But this guy is, you know, very, you know, soft-spoken. He's very humble-sounding. He's very uh, almost, like, you want to believe him. And I guess maybe he did. And that's insane that he lives to tell the tale about that shit. But what's the takeaway? Is it that the diminishing returns effect sets in, like, way earlier and this guy just used way more than he needed? Or is it that every single other bodybuilder is lying out their teeth and the three dying a ball a day and shot a primo a week that Rick Drazen and Frank Zane and every single one of these other guys talks about is complete horseshit i don't really know to be honest and you know you'd like to believe that the well i don't know really maybe it's annoying that if somebody's able to use low dosages and you don't look like them they look amazing it's you know disheartening and obviously discouraging for uh having optimism about your own progress if somebody can use 15 milligrams of dianable and 100 milligrams of primo a week and be 240 shredded and you're like can't even get close to that on 10 times the amount of gear but maybe this is actually what sort of in the middle of those two things of the extreme low end the Frank Zane, the Rick Raisins, et cetera, dosage outlines. And this guy, maybe somewhere in the middle is what they were actually using, or maybe it was closer to what this guy was doing. You know, it's hard. Who do you believe? Like, I don't know, to be honest. And at least it's interesting that some guy has come out of the woodwork and explained that this is actually a practice that was being adopted even as early as the 60s and the 70s. Because you would imagine that with all of the corroborating stories we've heard to date of that, you know, minimalistic dosage scheme that most of these guys were using that, but clearly that's not the case. So I don't know. Frankly, I still think that the dosages are excessive, obviously, and extremely abusive. And I'm he pretty much said he probably didn't need that much, which, you know, obviously. At like at what point does all your androgen receptors saturated and you're just spilling over and causing unnecessary stress on the body? I do think the diminishing returns effect is very real and it probably occurs much earlier than certainly seventy grams a week. <laughs> And certainly 10 grams a week, in my opinion, too. Maybe even sooner than 5 grams a week. Like, frankly, I think diminishing returns start to really set in around, like, one and a half, two grams a week. At least what I've seen anecdotally, as well as just through the years of researching through this stuff. Very, very in-depth. But, you know, I'm always you know, open-minded to hearing these guys out and listening to what they have to say. And the fact that he used this much and his physique didn't look substantially bigger than Arnold's or any of the other guys of his era, I think sort of just... I think implies not only that there's a significant diminishing returns effect, but it reinforces the likelihood that other guys may have been lying about their dosages. 
So I don't know. At the end of the day, this is all up for interpretation. You know, take from that what you will. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Do you think all the golden era cycles are complete bullshit? Like there's been a lot of guys from that era that have gone on record and said pretty much the same thing, even when it seemed like it wasn't planned, like when they weren't being interviewed by each other even when they wrote their own books when they talked on interviews with other people they all seem to even when unprovoked they didn't seem to coordinate their efforts or anything some of these guys aren't even friends with each other anymore and it seems like they'd have very similar outlooks on the whole like d-ball primo a little bit of deca sometimes some winnie some anivar some whatever but this is the first guy that really has come out and said something the complete opposite side polar opposite side of the spectrum so i don't know let me know what you guys think in the comments down below um please like and subscribe the comments help the algorithm too so it's very much appreciated when you guys drop those down please follow me on instagram at more plates underscore more days Facebook, Snapchat, Bitchu, Twitter, TikTok, Apple Podcasts. If you want to get sent my deep dives into bodybuilding pharmacology, I recommend you sign up to the newsletter. It's a free newsletter that you will only get sent those publications if you're signed up and they include much more detailed breakdowns of pharmacology and have concise subsections table of contents all the clinical studies i reference are hyperlinked for you to click on if you want to delve into it further for your own personal research if you're interested in hormone replacement therapy testosterone replacement therapy optimization of your health check out my trt clinic in the description below if you are somebody who is hormonally deficient have imbalances or just seek hormone optimization think you may benefit from it i'd recommend reaching out to the patient care coordinators there and it's free to talk to them and have them kind of do a general overview of your current health status and then if you do have some sort of deficiency or imbalance that would warrant medical intervention then at that point you can set up an appointment with a doctor and talk with them over tell telemedicine so you talk over skype or over facetime whatever it is zoom whatever works for you. And if you end up getting treatment, then you can get $50 off your first treatment by using the coupon code MPMD50. If you want to support Gorilla Mind, my turnkey nootropic and pre-workout formulas that I literally sit on a Word document and write out from scratch, I highly recommend you check those out. Just compare the label to your current pre-workout and you'll quickly see why I recommend it so much in every single video. I literally write these formulas out myself. We don't outsource it to some manufacturers trying to get a high margin we literally max out the dosages of everything we put in there and everything is included for a reason also check out anything else i'm associated with if you want to support the channel in the video description below thank you guys for watching talk to you soon